Islamic calendar in the year 61. On the hot desert plains of Karbala, a small city just south of the current Iraqi capital of Baghdad, a small group of 73 noble individuals were massacred by an army of 70,000. The victims were respected followers of the religion of Islam. The perpetrators, led by Yazid, son of Muawiyah, claimed to follow that very same religion. The leader of the small group of men, women and children was the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, Hussein, son of Ali. Only 50 years had passed since the death of the last messenger of God and yet already the Islamic nation, the Ummah, was in turmoil. The events that led to the tragedies in Karbala, however, did not begin with the reign of Yazid as the Caliph. They began to unfold in the last moments of Muhammad's life. Hussein, who had inherited the qualities of his father and grandfather before him, refused the request and in doing so put himself at risk of persecution from the Caliph. News spread across the Ummah of Hussein's stance against Yazid. The people of Kufa, which was one of the weaker links in the Caliph's empire, called upon Hussein to lead them against Yazid in a bid to overthrow the Umayyad dynasty. On the 3rd of Muharram, in the year 61, Hussein and his caravan of family members were confronted and made to stop at Karbala by the river Euphrates, for it was not only Hussein's companions that chose to accompany him, but also his sons, his women, and younger children. They continued, rest assured, O lady, until our last drop of blood, we will be there for Hussein. She thanked them dearly and then went back to her tent. Imam returned to his companions and then told them to bring their tents closer together in case of any ambush in the middle of the night. They then dug a ditch behind the tents and filled it with firewood. This was so that when the battle began, the tents would not be attacked from behoving and the fight would take place from only one direction. The companions then began praying and supplicating to Allah. Historians have narrated that the praying and supplication from the camp of Imam Islam sounded like the buzzing of bees. After supplicating to Allah, Imam then rested his head once more. This time the Prophet ﷺ came to him. He embraced him and said, O oh, grandson, we are waiting for you. Hurry, we are eager to be reunited. Imam salam woke up once more and realized the time for Fajr was soon to set in. The day had finally arrived. The day he had been waiting for all his life.
the day of Ashura. Friday, the 10th of Muharram, 61 years after Hijra, the day of Ashura. Time for Fajr set in, and Allah Akbar Islam came forward and gave the Adhan. Then Imam Hussain Islam led his companions for the morning prayer. He finished the Salah and then turned to address his companions. He said, Verily Allah, the Almighty, has intended that today you achieve martyrdom by my side. Therefore, be patient until you achieve success. It is narrated that there are 32 horsemen and 40 foot soldiers in the army of Rabbi Hussain alayhi salam on that day. He split them accordingly and put Zuhair ibn Qayyim in charge of the right wing, Habib ibn Murrahir in charge of the left, and handed the flag of the army to his brother, Abdul Fadl al Abbas alayhi salam. In the same way, Umar al-Sa'ad put Umar bin Hajjaj in charge of the right wing, Shimmer in charge of the left, Azra bin Qais in charge of the horsemen, and Shabbat bin Rabi'i in charge of the foot soldiers. Imam alayhi salam positioned his men in front of the tents and then commanded that the firewood which was in the ditch behind the tent to be set on fire. This was so that the enemies wouldn't be able to attack the tents from behind. At the break of dawn, Umar al-Sajani then began moving towards the camp of Imam. Seeing this, Imam alayhi salam raised his hands in prayer and said, O oh Allah, you are my supporter in all calamities and my hope in all adversities. You are my helper and supporter. Whatever misfortune has fallen upon me, I have turned to you and you have been there for me. O oh Allah, I complain to you regarding these people and I do not turn to anyone except you. A rider dressed in armor then approached from the army of Umar Sa'ad and saw the fire that had been lit behind the tents. He called out, O Hussein, are you already preparing for the fire of hell? Imam alayhi salam asked his companions, is that Shuma? They looked on and saw that it was him. And Imam alayhi salam replied, O oh, Shubur, you are more worthy of it. Muslim bin Asajah, who was skilled with the bow and arrow, asked the Imam, allow me to shoot at him. I am sure I can kill him. The Imam replied, O oh, Muslim, our intention is not to wage war on these people. We shall not be the ones to start this battle. Imam alayhi salam then mounted his horse and called out in a loud voice so all could hear him. O oh people, listen to what I say so that I know I have fulfilled my responsibility to guide you. And if you agree with what I say and there is no need to fight and if you disagree, it's up to you. Imam alayhi salam then quoted Surah Yunus verse 71. Then devise a plot, you and your partners, and let not your plot be in doubt for you. Then pass your sentences on me and give me no respite. Imam alayhi salam continued, Remember, who is my grandfather? Ask yourself if it is right to kill me and oppress my family. Am I not the son of the daughter of the prophet? Am I not the son of the first man to believe and assist your prophet, the cousin and the successor of the prophet, aren't Hamza and Jafar my uncles? Do you not remember what the prophet said about me and my brother, that we are the leaders of the youth of paradise? Is what I am saying a lie? He continued, if you do not believe what I'm saying, ask the companions of the Prophet who are amongst us today. Ask Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari. Ask Sa'id Khudri. 
سهل بن سعد ساعدي زين بن ارقام انا انس بن مالك they will tell you that they heard this tradition from the prophet of Allah is this not enough that you should stay away from shedding my blood Shimma replied I believe in Allah but I don't understand what you're saying hearing this Habib bin Mazahir said Truly, your belief in God is filled with doubts. You can't understand what the Imam says because Allah has placed a seal on your heart. Imam alayhi salam then replied, If you can't understand, then ask yourselves, Have I killed anyone um, from among you? Have I taken your wealth or hurt anyone of you? Everyone remained silent. They all knew Imam had never wronged anyone. Imam then called out, O oh, Shab'ath bin Rabi', O oh, Hajjar bin Abjar, O oh, Qais bin Ash'ath, O oh, Yazid bin Haris, didn't you write letters inviting me to come here? You each wrote letters inviting me to come to Kufa, promising me your support. They each lied. Ed, you invited me here, but if you have now changed your minds, I will leave. Qais bin Ash'ath said, We do not know what you say. Just submit to Yazid and let him decide an agreement between you. Imam replied, By Allah, I shall never give my allegiance to him and I will not run away like a slave. Imam salam then called out, Where is Umar Asad? But he did not come forward out of embarrassment. Imam then said, O oh Umar, will you commit the oppression against the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him, knowing we are innocent, just so that you may attain the governorship of Ray? Again, he remained silent. Then Imam looked at him and said, O oh Umar, I promise you, you will never get the governorship of Ray. Imam alayhi salam then got down from his horse and Zuhair ibn Qain gave a speech. Like Imam alayhi salam, he tried to show the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad that what they were doing was wrong. He said, as a Muslim, it is wajib for me to advise you against doing what is wrong. Well, some at least listened to what he had to say. Others just laughed and swore back at him. One man shouted out, We will not rest until we have killed you and your master. Rao bin Khuzair was another companion of the Imam alayhi salam and then came forward and tried to reason with the enemy. Likewise, he also came forward and continued to offer the advice to the enemy. In the meantime, Hul al Riyahi, who had stopped the caravan of Imam Hussein from reaching Kufa, approached Umar ibn Sa'id and asked him, Are you actually going to fight this man? Umar said, Yes, by God, heads will roll and limbs will be severed. Who then asked, Will you not accept any of his arguments or proposals? Umar replied, If it was up to me, I would. But Ibn Ziyad has made up his mind and rejected any proposals. Who then turned away and went back to his tent. He stood and looked out on the small army of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and then at the huge armies that surrounded them. He watched and listened to the companions of Imam alayhi salam as they each came and spoke the truth while the enemy just made fun. He wandered about the women of Hussein, trapped and surrounded by an army that had no mercy. These were the women of the family of the Prophet. With a concern, always confused look on his face, Ho looked on. His men even wondered. They had never seen Ho look so absent and lost in thought. For long, Ho climbed his horse and began striding towards the camp of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. A man called Muhajir bin Aus called back, Oh Ho, where are you going? 
Are you going to attack Hussein? But Toad did not answer him. Mahajo said to his companion, Hal's behavior doesn't seem right. I have never seen him behave like this at any battle. He looked scared and lost. He called out once more, Oh Hal, if I was asked who is the most courageous man in Kufa, I would say your name. Why do I see you looking so scared and confused? And where are you going? Who turned and replied, I find myself between heaven and hell, and by Allah, I shall not exchange anything for heaven, even if I am cut into pieces or burnt alive. Then Hur struck his horse and galloped towards Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Hur approached the camp with his hands on his head like a prisoner. When he came close, he got down from his horse and went to the Imam and fell on his knees. O oh, son of the Prophet of Allah, I am the one who had stopped you from going to Kufa and forced you to camp in this place. He continued, I never thought these people would send their armies to come and fight you. I thought an understanding would be reached, but these people have refused all your proposals. I don't understand how they can be like this. If I knew, I would have never blocked your way. Please, I'm sorry. Please, accept my repentance and intercede for me with Allah for what I have done. Imam Hussain alayhi salam lifted him back up to his feet, embraced him and said, May Allah accept your repentance. When the soldiers of Umar ibn Sa'ad saw this, many were taken aback. Hal was one of their most senior commanders. Umar ibn Sa'ad did not take it well at all. How could one of his leading commanders join the other side right before battle? In frustration, Umar called out to his flag bearer to raise the banner of war. He then took his bow and arrow, placed his arrow, drew back, and took aim directly at the tents of Imam. It is thought he must have had one last second thought, just as he drew his arrow back. But the thought of governing Ray overcame him, and he called out to his generals, Be witness that I am the one to begin this battle. He shot his arrow, and it landed in the camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the companion Zul. The battle had now begun. The first to approach the camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam were Yasser, the slave of Ziyad, the son of Abu Sufyan, and Salim, the servant of Ibn Ziyad, both jumping at the opportunity, seeing it as a chance to gain reward from their masters. We called out, who will fight us? Habib ibn Mawahir and Buray quickly got up, but Imam told them to wait. Then a man called Abdullah ibn Amir al-Kalbi asked Imam's permission to enter the battlefield. The Imam then allowed him. Wahab bin Abdullah al-Kalbi did not travel with the Imam from Mecca, nor did he join him on the way. Rather, he lived in Kufa. He had just got married and was travelling with his wife when he saw the armies of Umar al-Sa'ad entering Karbala on the morning of Ashura. <laughs>